So now we have the data files in hand, and so what Dan will do is um, he'll import them into uh, Genome Studio. So you need the intensity data file, and what it is, it's a light intensity uh, or color and color that's that's being uh, that's being read. Um, there's a there's a sample uh, sheet that he that he uh, creates that so that we can correlate the the data with uh, the, the intensity data with what was um, what was loaded on, and then there's a speed manifest file that comes from Illumina uh, that's that that gives the location of all the beads and what SNPs are there. So it's it's that data file that needs to be aligned with the intensity file to give the the, uh, the proper reads. So now he's uh, taken these three data files, imported them into Genome uh, Genome Studio, and so this is uh, uh, a screenshot of um, uh, Genome Genome Studio here. And so over here, where I have the circle, is what you're not seeing is if we were to if we were to expand this uh, window of of um, of information, all the way going out to the to the right would be all the progeny. So, and if this is our our diploid cross, there should be 92 progeny plus the 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 uh, parental lines on there that are continued down to the right that we could scroll over and look at. And then over here, what you do, you have in this column are all the all the 8,300 different SNPs. And so uh, you can kind of highlight, uh, you know, a single SNP and look at the data across all the all the progeny, uh, all the progeny there. And here you can see is the call that the the auto call that was made by by Genome Studio. Okay, and so here we got the, the homozygote, you know, BB homozygote AA, and so on. Over here. Is actually the graph for you to, to view what's actually what actually came off the um, off the eye scan, and so you have this theta value which you see over here theta, and you got you got the theta values here, and you have this um, uh, this normalized R uh, value that's that's over here, and so that's plotted out on the gra on the graph here, and so over in this um, section here let me, is you see them highlighted in blue, and so what you can do do now is you can say, oh, I want to look at the parents, or I want to look at one of the progeny or multiple progeny, and so you can highlight them here, choose the color, and then look up up, up here and see what you see. So the ones in yellow here are the ones that are highlighted. So these are the parents. The DM we have four reps of that, and the RH we have two reps, and so you can see them. Uh, highlighted in yellow, so you can choose the colors and all this. So it's a, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice program. And so you want to be able to manipulate, you know, move around in this program because you're going to come back and want to look at this in, this information after you've collected some of your uh, segregation data. So I think uh, so. I'm, I'm going to move on and kind of uh, just remember that you know you can do a lot of things in this in this program, but you. you um, what we're going to do now is we're going to export this this um, data into some something so that we can move it into a mapping uh, program. Okay, and so they have a, uh, a tool called Report Wizard, and so you go into that, and what you do is uh, just select matrix. Um, I remember earlier I talked about design strand, so you select the design strand as the on which to use as your reference call. And then uh, remove the, uh, the. We don't need to include the gen call score um, in this in this report. So it's calling it a report. And what you're going to do is it's creating a text file that we can then import into uh, Excel. Okay. So first thing we want to do is remove bad and questionable uh, SNPs. So here's some good SNPs. And so, um, in other words, if these were our homozygous parents and these are our heterozygotes, you can see that what we're looking for are ones that are have a that are not near the x-axis and that they're uh, distributed or tightly clustered within the different regions. 
So over here would be our one homozygous class BB, and over here is our homozygous class AA, and then our heterozygous, heterozygous class in, in the middle. Over here you can see a one-to-one -one segregation uh, between the, the progeny there when you have a one heterozygous um, parent. So here's some examples of bad SNPs um, for you. So you can see here we just don't have any tight clustering. It's just a scattering of, of, um, of, um, of dots all over the place. Here we're, we're not seeing any, any type of, of segregation going on for the progeny or parents. Here again, just a, a cloud rat and seeds. Uh, and then here I was talking about that when they're, they're close to the bottom here or close to the x-axis, that uh, it's kind of questionable whether we got a good a good call on that. So there's many more bad bad calls that we could consider. Okay, so Candy Hansi, Robin's uh, technician, has kind of gone through the diversity panel and uh, and the rust mapping population and the diploid mapping population, and then went once each uh, snip by snip over through the 8,300 SNPs to make uh, her calls, oops, sorry, on that. And, and just for you to, to see, so of those 8,300, she felt that 7,412 were good, were good calls. So this is over a broad you know, germplasm base in which she's basing this information. And then uh, you, can, you can see the other parts here, the questionable um, uh, segregation, questionable uh, bad segregation, and then here's a call rate for the good markers. How over 90% of them have, or are actually seven over 7,000 of them have a 90% uh, good call rate. Okay, so I th these are the ones that we want to work with. So we filter out those um, 900 uh, bad bad SNPs. Okay, it's amazing. We're throwing away 900 genetic markers. Okay, so these are the, the steps that we want to uh, 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 move through here is um, I, we're going to walk, walk through this process here. So, so you can go to this uh, web, website here, grab the, the data file, and you can remove the bad and questionable SNPs. That, so you, you can go in there. There's a list of them there. You can align it with your uh, data that came off. Um, you can also remove the SNPs that map to multiple locations in the super scaffold. So you want to filter the, uh, those out again in the in the same uh, uh, same file. Um, we're going to remove the parental genotypes that do not agree across replications. That's kind of logical. Um, we want to remove SNPs if we don't have a genotype for one of the parents. You know, we've got so many to work with. Why would you um, keep one in if there was a no call on the parents? Um, we also then, this was kind of a subjective, is if we felt there was too much missing data for a specific SNP, we uh, decided to exclude it from the, from the analysis. Uh, and of course, if the parents were both homozygous, we, um, we uh, excluded it and removed unexpected uh, genotypes. And so if, if a DM showed up as heterozygous, that's kind of a, a pretty good clue that that wasn't, um, wasn't good. We also removed ones that had um, highly distorted segregation or no segregation. Um, now, some of the, the, the ones I've got listed here are ones that we're going to um, walk through in, the, in, in, um, in join map. Oops, sorry. Um, is that we'll, um, is we're going to remove this co-segregating SNPs. Um, uh, and also remove any individuals that are identical at all at all those high. We're going to calculate the groupings. We're going to select groups for mapping, determine the marker order. Then add, we, we can actually go back and add in the co-segregating SNPs. And we can compare these to the pseudo molecule um, that Robin uh, um, uh, talked about. And we can determine the chromosome that, that these linkage groups correspond to and also calculate the, the, the map size. Although, so, so the question is, what's the rationale to remove the co-segregating SNPs? 
uh, for the simplicity of running JoinMap, they're going to cho choose one for each for each you know recombination bin, and so uh, we don't need to have all them you know the, the the SNPs that map to the same spot. I mean they're they they because of recombination, so it, it would just kind of um, make the map overpopulated with markers that are not really informative at this point. Yeah. So yeah. So we put them back in after we do, but we don't, we don't uh, yeah, we don't want to lose them. But but to run the map, we. we Well, yeah, you can you can use any of the the ones that that you want that that um that uh, co-segregate. Walter. Right. So Walter's asking us um, why we're we taking out the distorted one. I, I probably shouldn't. It's probably we're taking out the the actually the ones that are distorted and the ones we actually removed were the ones that. Even though the one parent was heterozygous and the other was homozygous, all the progeny were homozygous. You know, they 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 or or all all heterozygous. So there was like a complete distortion. So it's hard to hard to hard to read those. But yes, we kept in very highly skewed uh, lines, and I'll I'll point that out to you uh, here. Okay, so here's the the filtering process. So we have two, the two populations, the DM by 84 SD22 and the DM by RH. And so you can see the, the, um, the, uh, the, the process here uh, with the first filtering removing questionable and bad SNPs, um, removing SNPs with more than 10 missing calls. That was kind of our arbitrary uh, call since we're working with 92 progeny. Um, remove SNPs with inconsistent parent calls. Map, map to multiple pseudomolecules. So that took us from 7,666 7, down to um, 6971 and 7149 for the two uh, populations. Then we removed um, uh, uh, DM and 84SD22 no calls. Um, and so here's the big jump is when we removed the number of SNPs that were homo homozygous, same or different within the, so there's really no segregation is what, what that's saying. So there's no informative segregation. So those, those really um, are, the, are the key there. And then, then we removed the heterozygous DM SNPs, which, you know, in this case uh, weren't many. And then removed SNPs with no segregation. Those are the distorted ones, Walter. That, um, and then removed the, uh, so now you can see here's the, so here's the number. So, in DM by 84SD22, we had um, almost 2,500 segregating SNPs in that in that diploid cross, and in DM by RH, we had uh, almost 2,000. So that's a a good good number of mark, uh, markers to work with in those populations. But when we did the linkage, um, you know, analysis of those. Only 637 in the DM by 84, and um, and only 958 in the DM by RH were were unique, you know, uh, uh, or um, segregated uniquely. Okay, and so those were then selected for generating the map, and um, and then but then we can uh, add those um, uh, back back in. Um, for um, the, you know, the final, final map. 